hook in the vise, head in at the at the eye, move down to the middle of the hook and then go back towards the eye about two-thirds of that distance that you previously covered with thread. Take your piece of poly, then if you're ready for it, do as he did, kind of twist it. Try to Is this already the right amount? It's already the right amount. Should be anyway, pretty close. Uh, put your hands by the hook so they can see what you do. Put your hands up. There you go. Right. Yeah, yeah, Other ones. Okay, yeah. basically I'm just doing the same thing he did, which is just to twist it. And then form a loop. Measure your loop so that it's the length of the hook shank. Move it forward to where you've got the thread anchor. Do a pinch move. Come over it two or three times and you should have it pretty well secured. And one of the things I don't know if you caught, but whenever you're tying in something like this and you trim what's left after you've tied it in, you want to cut it at a 45 degree angle. So what I do is I kind of hold it up put my scissors parallel to the hook shank and just cut it. That way when you wind back over it, you'll end up getting an automatic taper. When, when you're ready and you've trimmed off the stub of your wing, just wind back towards the bend of the hook. You may have to hold those fibers a little bit to kind of keep them in place when you, uh, as you wind back. You might have some sticking out, but you can trim those off. You'll end up winding the. So uh, your tapered body, huh? Yep. Now, th this turns out for me is probably the hardest thing to do in this whole. Fly is, and this is where you need some pretty good light. You want to take four of these five brets and pull them away from the bunch, and then holding them together, cut off the bunch of four. Holding them in your hand like this, so that the ends stay together. And then switch to your right hand. You want it to be one and a half, twice the length of the hook shank. So, measure it, then grab it with your left hand, and go ahead and do a pinch. Again, Three tie-ins is enough. The next step is to go ahead and split your fibrets. Two on one side and two on another. This again is part of the, the fly tying that I find probably one of the most difficult things to do. Is grabbing two separating them and then doing the figure eight behind and coming up once again. I don't know if you can see this. If you can, maybe I've got too much, but I've taken, pardon? I've taken a very, very small amount of the black dubbing and I'm just going to put it on and if you can see how much I put on it's very thinly distributed and it's probably no more than about half an inch the black dubbing? the black dubbing, yes and just a little tiny bit teeny tiny bit as, as, as Puyan once said uh, I was taking a class for him and he says just barely enough to get the thread dirty
And go ahead and just wind up that egg sack. Uh, you should be able just to put all the whole the whole amount of dubbing on if you put on the right amount. Okay, and once you've wound that on, you've got the end of those five breaths that are still sticking out. You've got to get rid of those. Yeah, yeah. We already cut ours off. So now's the time to cut them off. You're taking your quill and you're going to tie in the skinny end of the quill after you've trimmed a little bit of it right in front of how much do you want? The dubbing set. Well, I heard you say something about an inch and a half. I, I cut off about an inch and a half. And I don't know if you can see this quilt on the, on the TV or not. But it's, it's, you want to get it at least some reasonable thickness. I'm going to do it after the fly is done. I'm going to put some head cement before I wind it. Yeah. Go right there. Yeah. Okay, once, once I put the glue on, I have wound my thread forward to the base of the wing. And now I'm just going to wind this quill forward. Well, you could. Don't sweat it right now to get the segment and effect that you would like for the body. I'm sorry. You left it up. Now we're snicketing it. Right there too, the smoother the other body, the smoother the quilt. Right, exactly. That's why it's important when you trim that poly wing off that you do it at a 45 degree angle and then wind your thread back over the top of it. Now this this is a really skinny quill, so I've been able to... Where'd you get the quills? These are really nice, by the way, Bob. Yeah, I forget. I probably ordered did them from... Did you buy them as quills, or did you strip them? No, I did not I did not strip them. I bought them from Feathercraft. Did you? Because they're real nice. <laughs> I was yeah, well, you know, I've, got, I've gotten mixed results. You know, sometimes yeah. happen, and other times I'll get some really nice quills. Well, the one I just worked with here was really nice. Yeah. So anyway, um, I wound it up to the base. Put about two or three wraps on it to hold it in place, and now I'll cut off what's left of the quill. Now, you're starting with your thread tie now positioned at the back of the wing. Take it, pull it back, and then pull, pull, build kind of a thread dam right at the base. Just jam it right into the base so that you get that thing to stand up straight. Okay, now at this point, you wrap the base and then wrap up like grabbing the wing as you go around. And I'm going to wrap back down rather than do what Quigley does. And then I'm going to finish up with the thread right in front of the base of the wing. Okay. Now hopefully the hackle that I pass out to you in size is about right. But try to get one with barbels that are about twice the gape of the hook. Now, you'll notice, of course, that these hackles, up to about this point, have got a lot of webbing in them. So, go up to the point where that webbing starts to disappear, and just strip it. And then go ahead and cut that piece off. Uh, I'm going to tie the feather. I'm going to I'm going to wrap it clockwise, <laughs> and so I'm going to end up stripping off the side that's away from it. 
And then what you'll do is you'll hold it up against the hook and then just tie it in. Your shiny side up. And it's uh, shiny side up. Yeah. Concave side down. At the back of the loop. Either way, Bill. Either way. Either way. Okay, now after I've tied it in, I've brought my thread right up to the front of the base of the, uh, the wing again. Now at this point, I've put in some of the combination of P and D and betas dubbing. And I've twisted the, well, pulled the fibers and overlapped them so that they mix pretty well. And go ahead and dub some of that onto your thread. So that you've got something that looks like about what I've got here. Now, a trick that George uses and, and he used is you dub it on and then you push it up so that it's just touching the hook. And then you can take a wrap around it. That secures the dubbing. And then if you need to, you can wrap it and dub it even tighter if it's still pretty fluffy on you. That was Pugh's technique. Yeah. He just barely kept a few fibers just yep. enough to Just enough that. and then... And then yeah. Which is a great technique. It is. Yeah, there might be more and more people picking that yeah, up. It's, it is a, a, you know, it's a great technique. You have to stay otherwise. You know. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dub the thorax. And I'm going to bring my... I'm going to dub up to and then back from the eye so that now I've got my thread still back to the base of the wing. You can use a regular hackle pliers. I've got this, this really kind of cute and handy gadget that when you're wrapping parachutes you can hold it vertical and you can just continue around Like this. Those are kind of neat. I think I somehow got mine mixed in with my home stuff. Uh huh. Okay, now he did about five wraps. My thread is hanging from a spot right in front of the wing. And I'm holding the hackle out horizontal from the base. Now, as I recall, what George then does is he counter wraps over top of that, only he didn't let it go like I did. You want, actually, you want your hackles pulled straight down, Bob. Oh, okay, straight down. down, and then you're going to go counterclockwise right at the base of the, of the hackle, and go, go around twice, three times, and then... Okay, and then, and then back down in the front of the wing. And then you want to go, yeah, and then you want to tie it off, make a loop. Right at the eye. Yeah. Now, okay, so what I've done is we've wrapped the hackle clockwise, we've tied it off by winding the thread counterclockwise. And as George just reminded me, when you tie it off, you should pull your hackle down to make sure that the thread crosses over the quill of the hackle. Now, this, I think, is really an easy step, and it's something that I think really makes this fly a lot easier to do. If you have a half-hitch tool, now take it, throw a couple of half-hitches around, and if you don't have a half-hitch tool, you can use this one. And once I put those half hitches in, I just reach up and I cut off the half that hasn't been wound. <clears throat> what you do is you now reach up just over the eye and 
throw a couple of hitches around the eye of the hook, trying to be careful that you don't trap any fibers like I just did. Just tie it off. Okay. And then just reach up and... But if you do get at least... That's it! With the exception of now, put a little bit right at the base of the wing where it intersects with the hackle. Do the same thing he did. Take it off, grab the wing, hold it upside down like this, and then put some cement on the body, and then some on the head. And that's it. So